Today I'm gonna to show you the secret to make a juicy salmon teriyaki with a nice thick glaze. So stick around. Welcome back to No Recipes. I'm Mark Matsumoto, and I'm here to show you how to elevate your everyday meals. So smash that subscribe button and ring that bell so you don't miss out. If you've seen my chicken teriyaki video, you know that you only need three ingredients to make an authentic Japanese teriyaki sauce. Soy sauce, sake, and sugar. After browning the chicken, the sauce ingredients go in and you bring that to a boil to form a nice thick glaze around the meat. It's a simple, delicious preparation for chicken. But if you tried it with salmon, it's gonna get dried out. That's because fish is much more delicate than meat and it cooks through at a lower temperature. So how do you get a nice thick glaze without overcooking the fish? potato starch, but it's not going into our sauce. Let's take a look at our other ingredients. In addition to the potato starch, I've got about a pound of skinless salmon fillets that are trimmed so they're about one inch thick. I also have a knob of ginger, and for the sauce, we have two tablespoons of soy sauce, two tablespoons of sake, two tablespoons of sugar, and that's it! The first thing you want to do is grate the ginger. I'm using a Japanese style grater here, but a microplane will work just fine. The idea here is to pulverize the ginger so that we can squeeze the juice out. Now I'm just going to gather the pulp up and use my fingers to squeeze out about a quarter teaspoon of ginger juice into the sake. Teriyaki translates to glossy grilled, so we don't want to add anything to the sauce that's going to cloud it up. Okay, now you want to use paper towels to dry off the salmon fillets. We're going to be dusting these with potato starch in the next step, and if the surface is wet, the coating's going to end up too thick. Now I'm just going to put the potato starch in a tea strainer and lightly dust every surface of the salmon with a thin, even layer of starch. This thin coating is like a primer for the teriyaki sauce and it'll make it stick to the salmon like gum on hot pavement. Just be careful not to overdo it or the coating's going to become noticeable. In case you're wondering if you can use a different starch, Tapioca and arrowroot starch both work, but I don't recommend using cornstarch. Now we're gonna heat a frying pan over medium heat until it's hot, but not scorching. Fish is delicate, and if the pan is too hot, it'll make the surface of the salmon chewy. Then you wanna add a drizzle of vegetable oil and put the salmon in the middle of the pan. Let this fry undisturbed until it's cooked about a third of the way through. You can check this by keeping an eye on the side of the salmon. It'll turn opaque as it cooks through, so once this line makes it about a third of the way up, it's time to flip it. Now we want to fry the second side undisturbed until it's cooked about a third of the way up as well. It's a little harder to tell on this side because the splashing oil cooks the surface of the side. But if you look at the gaps between the flakes and the salmon, you can see a little orange where it's not fully cooked through. You want to leave the salmon a little rare in the center at this stage because it's going to cook some more when we glaze it with our teriyaki sauce. Okay, these are looking good, so I'm gonna get them out of the pan. Then I'm gonna use a wadded up paper towel to soak up all the oil in the pan. 
This ensures we get a nice clear sauce. Now we're gonna go in with the sake and ginger juice mixture, the soy sauce, and the sugar. Give this a stir to dissolve the sugar, and when the sauce is thickened a bit, add the salmon back in. Now we just need to flip these over a few times to get a nice glaze on the salmon. As you can see, the starch on the surface of the salmon is absorbing the sauce like a sponge, giving it a nice thick glaze without making the sauce gummy. Once the salmon is evenly glazed and the teriyaki sauce has started to caramelize, it's good to go. Okay, let's get this out of the pan before the salmon gets overcooked. I've got a layer of rice on this plate and I'm gonna top it with a piece of that teriyaki salmon. Let's drizzle on some more of that beautiful teriyaki glaze. And then I'm gonna round the plate out with some steamed bok choy that I've seasoned with sesame oil, salt, and white pepper. Finally, I think I'm gonna garnish this with some sesame seeds and scallions, but this is totally optional. Just look at that glorious glaze. True to its name, our teriyaki salmon has a glossy sheen that'll make even a shampoo model jealous and the caramelized teriyaki sauce is percolating down through the rice, giving it loads of flavor. I don't know if you noticed, but this literally came together in a matter of minutes, and while it's best hot, it's also delicious packed into a bento box lunch. This method works with any kind of fish, and it's a great way to get sauce to stick to it. So I hope you'll give it a try. If you enjoyed this video, you can let me know you want to see more like it by giving this a big thumbs up and by sharing it with all the salmon lovers in your life. As always, I want to thank my awesome patrons who helped to fund this video. If you're learning something new from my recipes, I hope you'll consider clicking the link up here to join the No Recipes crew and help support our future videos. Well, I'm going to go have this salmon with a big old bowl of rice, but I'll catch you in the next one.